Hey, what's going on, my friends? This is your boy, Turgon, coming at you with a new video today. Just sitting around a little uh, bored and back end, so I figured I'd come by and drop a quick video. Talk about, well, honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing next season, so I'm just going to talk through a bunch of commanders because I don't have anything else to do while I'm in back end, and I have no idea what's going to happen. So I'm just kind of waiting for next season to happen and throwing some stuff on some commanders and thinking about testing it out and if we play a campaign where that makes sense then great and if we don't then you know life is a game of adjustments after all uh so i'm just gonna walk through kind of my top 10 comms as quickly as i can um this is my galadriel he's got a car she's got the carver men attack really doesn't do anything for her because it's more about commander damage but she's got the focus, she's got smite, that's what you need. Some defense from the scale mail, more focus. Melee vigor, mitigating damage to melee units. Ancient Numenorean Helm, this is a new item for me, so I'm, I'm just testing it. It's extra defense and HP for men, so that's really good. The focus is good. Not sure uh, if I'm in love with this trait or not, but uh, it's what I have, so I'm going to roll with it for now. Give it a shot. And then the smoking, uh, the smoking pipe here with focus and sustain. From a skill perspective, I mean her skills at level 50. This shouldn't really particularly surprise you. There's a little bit of wiggle room and flexibility in how you allocate kind of these seven points here. Maybe you want to do five and two or four and two, and then put another point somewhere else. I mean, but you want these maxed out and these maxed out. What you do pretty much after that is completely up to you. Um, so that's Galadriel in terms of the uh, Gilgalad. Uh, anyone who has been following me should know my Gilgalad pretty well at this point. Uh, I stack the Might of Elves between the Knife and the Harp, and then the extra resistance on the chest and the Aegis. Four gold stars. I need two more Aegis to get this finished three more of these guys to get another five percent or 4.1 i should say no it is 5.1 yeah it gets you to 30 uh and i need two more of these and i need like a gajillion of these so uh we're getting there but i love my gilg a lot i think he's really really strong he is versatile he's good against just about anything uh the skill build i mean this is just kind of a, a, a messing around build but in general you want this, this 15 and 7 this 15 7 and 7 then what you do after that with your remaining points is pretty much you know flexible depending on who your opponent is you can of course abandon the kingly kin tree if you're facing an opponent with pursuit it's obviously not going to help you very much because they're going to just because the pursuit's going to cut through all this evasion uh and then at that point this 14 percent extra damage doesn't mean beans because your units are getting trashed so you might as well take those points and throw them into like a white council and maybe high alert if it's a if you know if it's a an evil side opponent um, this might be helpful, or uh, perhaps even a, a Galadriel if you're fighting light side. Um, and, I mean, the White Council is going to help you mitigate a little bit of physical damage as well. So um, that could be helpful against, you know, your Sunids, your um, Khaldun's, your Grimas, whatever. Whatever's using Reapers or Dragoons. So that's Gilgalad. Uh, I use him a lot. I'm looking forward to you using him again. I didn't get to use him last season because I played the dark side, evil side. Uh, this is my seal door. He's got the gigantic hammer with rend. Plus six to army attack. The ranger's shroud. Another three or two ranged. Defense to ranged. Ranged vigor. I'm going to go with this over uh, hysteria for now, but I'll certainly try both. And more attack to ranged, and then more attack. So in all, he has plus 17 attack to ranged units. Uh, plus I got the tactical mark, so he's going to get pursuit the first three rounds. He's got good speed. From a skill build perspective, I this is kind of just what I'm going with as like a standard old standby build you know you got your 15 your 7 your 7 your 15 your 7 your 7 2 1 you're done um this is going to only inflict um 
madness for one round, the first round. So if they have immunity, uh, it's not going to do anything. And it's only doing the army. It's not doing the commander. Uh, if you want to do the commander, you got to come up here, go into the ring bearer tree, and do ring of terror. So that's going to take more points because you got to put. You know, if you want seven points in this, you need 14 points in that. That's 21 points as opposed to just the straight seven in here. So uh, things to think about. Of course, you can always get the Discord helmet as well on him. Then you don't need any points in Madness because Discord affects both. Uh, it's like Ring of Terror in that it affects both the commander and the units, which is really nice. So I'm looking forward to testing him out next season. Uh, I just got this accessory at the end of last season. It's a new accessory in the game. So I'm looking forward to checking that guy out. My A2, this is a knight build, however, um, yeah, I actually did switch all the traits over. I forgot I did that. So he currently is set up to mitigate 110% uh, damage, and I've heard that there is a cap at 90%, so he is at that, so not a big deal um, that I don't have the fifth gold star in here. Uh, at some point, I'll put the fifth star in here just to get the extra stats, which will be nice. I have another one of these. It's on my Theoden. Uh, the Heath Lane for extra HP. So um, this is just a general A2 build. He's not my, you know, I'm not going to be maining him or anything, but I will chuck some knights on him at some point. I'll probably, you know, as this the season evolves, I'll try to have a, like a bank of four to six thousand knights available, and I'll just throw some knights on Aragorn and go nuts with him, especially for fighting evil side opponents. For fighting good, I'll switch that chest over to a focus piece. Like this one, the quilted armor that I have on Gimli, Gimli's axe, and it's a great item on. I definitely recommend this unique above all other uniques of any good side tier two commander. Um, although the Aomers is obviously very, very good as well. I, the Odin's is pretty good. Um, I haven't heard too much great things about, the, uh, you know, like Legolas or Gandalfs or. Um, Celeborns or any of the other tier two commanders. So really, if you're thinking about getting a tier two unique item, I recommend, I think you get the most bang out of your buck for, for Balan's Axe here for Gimli, uh, because once his focus reaches 100, which is really easy to do, he gains Pursuit. Um, so he cuts through all that evasion. And then also, as you level this up, I mean, an extra 12% damage dealt um, at two stars is enormous. Uh, and then I do the Brutal Helmet for melee reducing you know reducing the damage might speed it's good stuff might focus army hp so this stacks with this so it's plus six army hp plus a light heal so <coughs> that's how i built my gimli from a skill perspective this is what i got going on with him you want these two trees maxed out that's what boosts his commander damage uh and these all this stops healing um this breaks defense. This is nice, but this all, uh, you know, I don't really know if I like putting the fifth point in here. I guess I could put it in lock bear, but maybe it makes more sense to do this. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. But um, this only affects the uh, the army units. It doesn't affect um, Gimli himself. So just be aware of that. So that's Gimli. Uh, Gandalf, I'm mostly just using him for tile taking and farming early. Right now I have the Merkwood bow on him, but I certainly will, can change it up to a smite. I'll probably put the smite carver on him since I don't know if I'm playing on RP or, or RP or not. If I do play um, non-RP, then I might use Sauron. Um, but um, if we're playing RP and we're playing his good side, then I will take this carver and I will put it on my, my Gandalf for early game. And then later as the season progresses uh, and I get more ranged units unlocked and conscripted and ready to go, I'll go with something like this for him. Uh, the guard is good. The range is good. Hunter skin. And then bone mask, hysteria, army HP, very good. And then I give him Hunter's Mark Pursuit um, harp with focus. It's you know it's just not, it's Gandalf. I'm not using him for PvP really at all. So uh, I'm just kind of throwing what I can throw on him, but to give him um, as many strengths as I can really. From a skill build perspective, you know the two one, uh, the two one here. This is up to seven. I just chucked my extra points in there. You want this filled out? You want this filled out? Pretty standard. Pretty pretty basic. Nothing I, that should be earth shattering um, to any tenored good side player that plays this game uh one of the new things i'm going to be checking out next season is theoden i just finally maxed out my cutlass last season 
uh, played evil last season, so I was using this on my Witch King, so now I'm putting it on my Theoden. Uh, melee Vigor on the Spirit Halberd, I can switch this over to Fire Protection if I need to, I have an extra one. Horseman's Helm, 15 defense to mounted units, Madness Immunity, first three rounds is huge. Defense 15 here, 15 here. So plus 30 defense, and then attack and HP to mounted units from the Miras Reigns, plus another heal to stack on top of his heal. This guy, you are a leader. So this is pretty much a standard Theoden build. You want to max Rahiram for the damage. You want Riding Excellence to mitigate damage to mounted units. You want Horse Master to increase the attack mounted units and their HP by 5. That's massive, especially stacked with the Miras Reigns. And Chaotic Retreat. you got to have Chaotic Retreat. Some people like to put one point in here. I think it's dumb, and a lot of people who play Theoden agree with me. Um, like the people who play Theoden as their main giving Theoden initiative does absolutely nothing because he's not a damage dealing commander and what you're doing by doing that is pro uh, procking his heal to go sooner in the battle so before you know your units take any damage so um if you like putting one point in here i suggest testing it out and seeing which way you like it better and take that point out and put it somewhere else because um you might find your healing numbers go up and if you're healing units then they're dealing more damage because you have more units when they're attacking. So that might be beneficial for you. Uh, I see a lot of people put points in the renewed. This is worth less more times than not. Um, and the defensive stance and the reinforcement really aren't going to do much for you either. I mean, this doesn't even come into effect until round seven. Uh, the defensive stance, okay, that could be okay. It'll buff his damage a little bit. Maybe you'll mitigate a little bit of damage. But the just the, to me, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Put those points in mounted combat this is going to increase your damage this increases your damage this is increases your damage just stack it this way i think this is an optimized build and i'm only at r8 so um, as i get more reputation on him uh, i may have some more challenging decisions to make maybe i don't we'll see that's my theodim let's see what am i what else am i using uh i got faramir here at some point i'd like to continue leveling this cape up I got three stars, gold, at least upgrading it, um, strengthening it, I should say. So, so I get up to five stars and max out the base stats because they're really good. But the Athelian Ambush is also really nice on him. Uh, combo that with the Merc with Bow, ranged might. This one, I gave him the Hysteria Hood. So if I need a Hysteria Hood on, on a sealed or if I don't like that, I could swap them out if I'm not using Faramir. Um, or I have another one, I could just change the trade out. For this but you know range damage here uh, defense to men here ranged attack here so three six nine to ranged attack from those three items uh, and plus you know the damage dealt plus 40 percent here all of that is just from the gear and then you come into his traits his skills and this boosts his physical damage by another 45 percent on top of that 40 percent so the first two rounds he does some baller damage he's stun immunity um the army is stun immune during these first two rounds so you don't need to put st um, a stun immunity item on him because of the guide which is great uh, i just put this through my last four points on here because i preferred it over this but you can certainly use this if you're fighting other ranged units. Um, you can respect them for that purpose. Um, I go with the Foresight, so he gets Pursuit. I don't need to put an item on him to give him Pursuit. He has it from his kit. Those are points well spent, in my opinion. Um, and then the 7 to Rush. Over here, the hair to, uh, to increase the allied damage. So you're reducing, uh, you're mitigating damage as the, the, heat, the, the fight goes on. And another 21% damage to men. So if you add the 21% to the 40%, 61%, and then during the first two rounds with a guide, um, another 45%. So 45 plus 61, that's 106% increased damage between um, the gear and the skills during the first two rounds of the fight. So it's pretty significant. Um, I haven't used him extensively or tested this build extensively, so that might be something that I'm looking to do next season, depending on what faction I'm playing. Uh, another he commander that I have geared up here is Dwalin, uh, kind of similar to Gandalf. I don't plan on using him for PvP, really, at all, just because um, 
I prefer to use all my dwarf units on Gimli. Gimli is my PvP uh, dwarf commander. Uh, I don't want to cut... If I have 10,000 guardians, I can use 5,000 guardians on Gimli twice. Why would I want to waste 5,000 guardians on a weaker commander to my Gimli, like Dwalin? Uh, so I could kill my my dwarves much faster by splitting those forces up that way. So I'm going to just use him for PvP, kind of uh, PvE, I should say, early in the season. And at some point, once I get farmed up and start farming up my other commanders, he'll drop off and I'll just stop using him altogether. But this is what I got on him. He looks pretty nice. Um, for newer players, I think they, they would be like, really, you're not going to use that at all? <laughs> defense dwarves and then the shatter. Uh, you got the scale mail, more defense, melee vigor. Hysteria on the Bone Mask, so he's causing madness every two rounds. HP to your troops, my focus. And then the Trumps of Moria. I put Bane of Dwarves on here. So if it's a weird season and I'm fighting Erebor for some reason or another, or I find an enemy with that's running Dwarves, he could be pretty nasty in that scenario. That might be a scenario where I run my, my Dwalin over my Gimli, but um, I think that's a very niche scenario, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't plan on that, and also I could change the swap the, the trade out for a different a different trade if need be. Um, from a skill perspective, so I have him set up for this is kind of a PvP build right now. Uh, it's a damage mitigation for PVE. I would go with musician skills here. I'd probably take all of these points out. And dump them all up here. I tend to go with just the R0 for, for PvE mode, but maybe this is a better way to go and just take these points out and dump them in here. That could be a better way to go. And I could keep the warrior, which is actually really nice. Reducing the, the physical damage of the army by 15% is significant, and the negative 50% for damage is, um, is also definitely nice in a number of scenarios. So um, let's take a look at that. We'll go from there. I have Eowyn geared here right now, just with some leftovers. Um, you know, Bane mounted units, hilarious. So if I send her to fight other like cavalry units, um, she could be pretty nasty. I was using this actually on Armored Sauron last season, so uh, I could change the trait if need be. Uh, I have the other traits that I could use for this Easterling Spear. Um, like I think there is a, a trait that boosts. Uh, damage to mounted units, so I could use that. That might be a better all-around spear as opposed to this being um, a circumstantial spear when I'm only when I'm fighting other cavalry. Uh, and then I gave her the quilted armor of focus protection. If I needed to put this on another hero in a pinch, um, I would just rip it off of her because I don't plan on using her. I plan on using Theoden, similar to what I was talking about earlier, where I would primarily use Gimli instead of and not use Dwalin. So I'm maintaining my um, dwarven area of the barracks. I would use Theoden over Eowyn um, pretty much 100% of the time so that I'm not burning through all my cavalry super fast either. But if I needed to use her, I have her set up. She's got Mounted Vigor on this. I could switch it over to um, Madness Protection if I need. And then I just threw the orb, <coughs> the Palantir of Orthanc here on her. Uh, I might burn this. I don't know. I kind of want to save it in case I get the one with um, Pursuit, the Tactical Mark one. Um, so then I could put a star in it pretty much right away, but at the same time, I also would love to finish off this guy, or even potentially start working on this Blitz Fiddle, which could be nasty. Um, from a skill perspective, I, I, I buff her for army damage. Some people like to go with Thurnhelm and go for more of a commander damage build, and there's nothing wrong with that, and I think it's a good build. Um, but there are some times where one works better than the other, and like I said, I don't really use her, so I'm not really concerned about what I'm doing skill build-wise, but just kind of going through the, the process of explaining why I have her the way that I have her. Um, similar to Theoden, you need the Rohirrim and the Riding Excellence, the White Lady of Rohan, this gives her a heal and then stun immunity. Stun immunity, period. She's just immune to stun all, all 10 rounds, not the first two rounds, which is kind of nice. Frontline rescue, big heal in round three, and then an ability to boost damage to men units and more. Uh, and then shield made in here. I don't know. I did 12 and 6. I think that's stupid. Um, probably take this point out of attack vitals. Take three points out of here. Make this 15. Make this 4. That's probably a smarter way to go. The defensive stance is going to help her mitigate some damage as shield made in well as well. Uh, extra 15 to focus is also going to probably be more effective than whatever it is that I have going on here right now. But I just kind of 
you know, it, it's kind of these are kind of mock builds, so I'm not really like super critical of them. And she's my tenth commander. She's the last one I'm going to show you today. So if you hung in, uh, in there to watch the entirety of this video, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I wish you good luck in your next season of Lord of the Rings: Rise to War, and wish you all well. Take care. Cheers.